toy crazes, also known as toy fads, are serious business for both American companies and consumers. The circular, almost ritualistic demand for certain toys carved out titans of industry in the children's toy world. Hype over toys like Tickle Me Elmo would lead to resale value skyrocketing to the thousands, as well as multiple tramplings of Walmart and Toys R Us employees. North America has been gripped by Tickle Me Elmo hysteria. 48 of the bug-eyed beasts were put on sale at a local Walmart, and one of the clerks was sent to hospital after being trampled in the frenzy. Somebody in the crowd yelled, there's the Elmos, and they rushed us. But before Tickle Me Elmo, there was an even bigger toy fad, one that eventually led to some adults developing weirdly large collections worth tens of thousands of dollars. Even at the height of their popularity, nobody really understood why the Cabbage Patch Kids were so sought after. As far as I'm concerned, they're the worst looking things I've ever seen. I mean, they are pathetic looking, they're homely. I don't know what exactly the attachment is. I think they're cute, but kind of funny looking. But nonetheless, they managed to quickly become a household name, not just for their signature look, but also for their strange backstory. See, Cabbage Patch Kids aren't made in a factory like regular toys, no. The Cabbage Patch Kids are born in a hospital in rural North Georgia, underneath a magic crystal tree. But somehow the freaky hospital demonstrating live Cabbage Patch birth isn't actually the most interesting thing about the Cabbage Patch Kids. The way the story goes, good old Southern boy Xavier Roberts was playing in the woods when a bunny bee buzzed by his head. Xavier followed the bunny, which had the wings of a bee, through a waterfall and into a cave filled with magical crystals. The end of the cave was blocked by vines, so young 14-year-old Xavier took out his trusty pocket knife and cut the vines away. Finally on the other side of the tunnel, Xavier could see that the vines were actually roots to rows and rows of cabbages. Xavier looked up to see more bunny bees flying by overhead sprinkling dust from the magic crystals all over the cabbage patch. In the blink of an eye, all of the cabbage heads began to change into the heads of babies. One of the babies pleaded with Xavier to help them find families, or else nearby gold mine owner Lavender McDade would kidnap and force them into child labor. Xavier promised the orphan Cabbage Patch kids that he would find them all families by building a special hospital called Babyland General, where they could live and play until they're adopted. Now what if I told you that the story you just heard, that isn't a true story. That story is just a corporate sham meant to cover up the real story about Xavier Roberts and the Cabbage Patch Kids. A story of ruthless capitalism and borderline intellectual property theft. The way the story really goes is that in 1976, 21-year-old Xavier Roberts met artist Martha Nelson Thomas at a craft art fair. Martha's soft sculpture handmade creations, called the Doll Babies, caught the eye of Xavier, who at the time was managing a local gift shop. Xavier purchased some of the Doll Babies from Martha, who agreed Xavier could sell the dolls for no more than $30 each. However, Upon hearing that her dolls were being resold for more than double their price, Martha Nelson Thomas decided to withdraw her dolls from the gift shop. This decision infuriated Xavier, who promised Martha that he would continue selling the doll babies, with or without her involvement. Shortly after, Xavier Roberts would create his own dolls, called the Little People, that bore a striking resemblance to the original doll babies. The Little People were sold for anywhere from $60 to $1,000, with the more expensive dolls bearing Xavier's signature on their bottom. Using some of the money from the success of the Little People dolls, Xavier would convert an empty medical clinic into Babyland General Hospital. Well, we've been selling, uh, I guess, fantasy. People want to um, have a good time. It's just like going to see a movie. It's just the same thing, except this one lives with you. <laughs> He's suffering from a slight ear infection. We're curing that up with TLC. TLC is a drug that our hospital feels responsible for discovering. It's not used in most major hospitals. We hope they begin soon. It's tender loving care. We also use a lot of imagicillin here. His fever's gone down. We're treating him with imagicillin. It helps on the fever a lot. Do you think he'll pull through? Oh yes. 
we haven't lost one yet. For the next three years, the Little People dolls would continue to increase in popularity, until in 1981, when Roger Schlafer, a licensing agent and designer from Atlanta, would approach Xavier Roberts about licensing the Little People's design to a major toy manufacturer. The only problem was the name. The name The Little People was mundane, and didn't have the legs to expand into the entertainment and publishing business that Roger Schlafer envisioned. So Roger and his wife would draft a new backstory for the Little People dolls called The Legend of the Cabbage Patch Kids. After finally getting Xavier to agree to change the name of the dolls by including him as a main character in their origin story, Schlafer would reach out to every major toy manufacturer in the country to pitch his Cabbage Patch Kids idea. But every single one of them turned him down, due to the Cabbage Patch Kids being too ugly to sell on the mass market. And they were. But Schlafer still had an ace up his sleeve. The electronic game company, Coleco, was experiencing an extreme market change due to the rise of the home computer and was looking to expand into the children's toy market. So in 1982, Roger Schlafer and Xavier Roberts would join Coleco's design team in creating a cuter plastic-headed Cabbage Patch Kid doll that could easily be mass manufactured. However, Coleco did not anticipate the massive demand and would continuously struggle to keep shelves stocked with the plastic-headed Cabbage Patch Kids. This scarcity only led to higher demand, and by the holiday season of 1983, customers were fighting each other and retail employees in order to get their hands on a Cabbage Patch Kid doll. One woman broke her leg, four others were hurt. One store official armed himself with a baseball bat. And all of a sudden, I saw all these people rushing toward all these boxes, and then all of a sudden they were Cabbage Patch Kids. The widespread attention the Cabbage Patch Kids were getting eventually led to a lawsuit between Xavier Roberts and Martha Nelson Thomas, the creator of the original Doll Baby. Martha had not wanted to go after Xavier for the money he was making, but after seeing the commercialization of her doll's design, she finally decided that she was going to sue. The lawsuit dragged on for a few years until eventually settling out of court for an undisclosed amount of money. Nonetheless, the Cabbage Patch Kids were an international success. Not even two years after launching, and the brand had generated over $2 billion in sales. The Cabbage Patch Kids had saved Coleco from the brink of financial ruin, but it didn't last long. Six years later, in 1988, Coleco would file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and would turn over licensing and production rights for the Cabbage Patch Kids to Hasbro. Although the Cabbage Patch Kid dolls were still best-selling toys, the rage and rioting was over. By 1996, the new toy craze, Tickle Me Elmo, would completely overshadow the Cabbage Patch Kids. And with no TV or movie presence, there was seemingly no way to significantly revive them. The Cabbage Patch Kids are still around today. Although their manufacturing rights have changed hands between basically every major toy retailer in the business world, but that doesn't mean the toy's a dud. There's still tons of weird adults who love to collect their pudgy soft dolls and treat them like they're real children. What got us interested originally uh, was just the way they looked and that you could cuddle with them. They become like your own children, except you don't have to feed them, and they don't cry, and um, they stay in their places. The Babyland General Hospital is also still around today, and if you're willing to drive to Cleveland, Georgia, and shell out about $150, you can still adopt a soft sculpture Cabbage Patch Kid and watch it get born straight out of the Cabbage Patch underneath the magic crystal tree, just like Xavier Roberts did in the Cabbage Patch Kid's origin story 40 years ago.